What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Mindshare Podcast. My name is David Greenspan, as you know, and you are watching us live on Season 4. Additional podcasts are available at Mindshare101.com and on all the major podcast platforms. This week's episode is sponsored by Kits Keep In Touch Systems and our friends over at the Buzz Conference. Now, be sure that you're following the Buzz Conference on Instagram at the Buzz Conference. Keep tabs on everything they are up to. Um, give them a visit on their website, www.thebuzzconference.com. Uh, again, the next event that is coming up, and they've got all these amazing events, but they got another one coming up called The Queen Bee. Now, this is where the Canadian Women's Council of Real Estate Professionals are getting together um, on April 22nd, downtown Toronto at the Bisha Hotel. And, uh, well, hey. I'm just going to just just encourage you to be sure to check out their website. Find out uh, if you can still get tickets. I believe the event may already be sold out, but uh, whatever you do, do not wait. Go check them out quickly. Uh, and if, as always, we are very proud to have the Buzz Conference as a sponsor of the Mindshare podcast. Kits is also with us today as a sponsor. I mean, as always, when are they not? Uh, and I have to tell you that our team at Kits continues to come up with new ways to make this very powerful marketing system even more powerful. I mean, it's it's one thing to be using like a bright and shiny sort of CRM system, but it's a whole other thing to use a system that is completely connected. One that has a whole bunch of marketing tools right within it. No need for any third-party providers. Um, no need for separate email blast systems. No need for separate uh, social media systems. No need for separate websites and landing pages or keep in touch programs. I mean, it is powerful. There are a ton of different tools here. And I mean, seriously, Kits is absolutely loaded. And and, and it, like, I'm going to warn you. Well, mind you, it's probably not a warning right now. But like, once you check it out, you're going to be hooked. This thing is amazing. So anyways, go to my website, mindshow11.com and click on marketing to find out more about this awesome platform. And as you know, we are on a push to get to 100 reviews on iTunes. And so I'd like to ask you, if you haven't done this yet, um, please take two minutes. Go over to this link right now. Well, actually, don't do it right now. Do it after. But ratethispodcast.com forward slash mindshare101. Again, that's ratethispodcast.com forward slash mindshare101. Um, give us a big five stars, please. If they got six, do that one too. If they got 10, do it. Uh, but of course, a little review, something about what uh, what you love about the show. We would be very, very grateful if you did that. So again, that's ratethispodcast.com forward slash mindshare101. Today's episode is number 176. An accomplished, award-winning professional, her 20-plus years in the financial services sector has provided her with a unique understanding perspective of the needs of her clients. Her experience is only outmatched by her relentless passion for helping clients either achieve their dream of home ownership or helping them navigate through tough financial times in their lives. She has aligned herself with the largest mortgage brokerage companies in Canada and has equipped herself with the most extensive resources with access to all lenders and options available in the Canadian mortgage market. She says, making dreams come true and making nightmares go away is what she does every day. This week on the show, I am joined by mortgage broker, Lucy Bioka. Lucy, hey, welcome to the MyShare podcast. Thank you. It's so awesome to be here. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, David. Yeah, it's awesome to have you here. In fact, it was uh, it was awesome to see you a couple of weeks ago at the Buzz Conference. It's incredible to think that like we're already what two weeks removed from that conference. I can't believe it's already two. Oh my weeks. god! Insane. How awesome though, right? Like oh, so many people was, there. There were so many people. There were so many familiar faces. There were so many new faces, and it was just so wonderful to be out with people again. It was Wasn't just. It? an exceptional day i know i know sure. how, how was it for you though like i mean was there a lot of people coming by like did you get to have a oh, lot yeah. of conversations with people yeah busy a lot of conversations it was super duper busy um you know we all needed coffee oh my God. so it was uh it was pretty amazing though <laughs> that's right yeah the espresso machine going on yeah yeah that is uh, what would you say to anybody who like didn't show up did they miss a whole bunch you know what? The, you missed a tremendous, tremendous conference. 
Um, what, what I love about the Buzz Conference, first of all, I'm the biggest, hugest fan of Virginia. What yeah. she does and how she brings people together is absolutely just mind-blowing. But what I love about the Buzz Conference is whatever stage you, you're at in your business, whether you're new or you've been uh, you know, a realtor, a, an agent or a broker for 30 years, there's always something to get out of it. It's just insane. Um, if you've missed it, you have to make the next one. You absolutely have to. I was uh, I was having a conversation with somebody this morning who was there, um, and he was also in another event in Vegas just about a month ago. And I mean, the event in Vegas was was way bigger, um, but he was at the Buzz Conference. And he said, "Dave, I took so much value away from this event. It was amazing." And he just had he had great things to say about it. So I thought it was awesome just being able to get together, being there with people, being able to smile and shake hands and take selfies and do all that other stuff. It was uh, a lot a lot of fun. But um, yeah, it was good to see you, and it's good yeah. to have you here. Thank so you. Thanks again let's for do this. Me. I want to talk about achieving the dream of home ownership. And, and, and I say that, and I want to preface this and say, you know, this is for people who aspire to be homeowners. Um, but this is all for also for people who are, are homeowners, but they want to get to that next level in whatever that yes. means for them. Right. So right off the top, how does that uh, last week's BOC announcement affect people? So the one from this morning, there Ooh, is. See, it's funny. I'm going back to like. Well, yesterday or no, Thursday last week, I believe it was. But anyways, this morning too. Yeah. I mean, just, just there's a lot going on out there, rates, et cetera. Talk to us about that. So there is so much volatility right now with rates. Um, the most important thing to do, honestly, uh, for realtors, for uh, clients is align yourself with somebody that understands what is happening. Now, I, you know, honestly, I always say if I had a crystal ball, I would be a very, very, very financially rich person. I keep myself very <laughs> you rich. You too, eh? Ways, but, uh, but in all honesty, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with the rates. There's, you know, there's, um, how can I put this? There's there's speculation. There's speculation everywhere. You, you've got the media saying, oh, rates are just going to go, you know, completely out of control. And yes, they're going to they're gonna go up. It is what it is. I mean, Realistically, and I say this aside from even looking at the economic uh, factors of what are taking place, like, did we really expect 2% rates forever? We've had them for the last 10 years-ish. I agree with you. Right? I agree did with you. we really, like, I, I just look at that from a realistic perspective, like, come on. <laughs> well, it's true, though. Like, it's, it, you know, what goes up must come down, what comes down must go up. I mean, the reality is there's not a lot further down that it could have gone, so we are going to see things going up, but... You know, I think that that's got some long-term impact on, you know, decisions that people are making today versus what could happen down the road. I mean, okay, here, as we talk about race, how much further are, they, are we projecting? Like, what, what's the deal with, like, the next eight months, sort of the end of 2022, um, but even into, you know, the next, like, what, 20 months, like, end of 2023? What are we seeing here when we look at the rates? What, what are we projected to get to? So, Any thoughts? I, again, I know it's not crystal ball. Yeah, no, we're at, with regards to five-year fixed rate, we're approaching, if not at the 4% mark. Okay? okay. I mean, that is what it is. I, I'm i a huge proponent of variable rate, even in a, a climbing interest rate environment, because throughout, you know, throughout all of history, and you, and you can go back and you can have a look at what, um, you know, what the rates were, what they are, where they're going. But variable rate has always been less expensive, even in a climbing interest rate environment. Now, with that being said, if somebody is going to sleep, you know, if somebody's going to wake up in the middle of the night going, oh, my God, I'm in variable rate, where are the rates going to go? And they're going to lose sleep over it. Don't bother. Mm -hmm. Get into your fixed right now. The challenge that we're finding right now is that with fixed rates being at 4% and variable just, okay, so as of today's this morning's interest rate increase, uh, you know, prime is now at 3.2%. Most of us are, or, you know, there are quite a few of us that have taken advantage of variable rate. We're at, you know, prime minus 0. 0.9, prime minus one. You're still at 2.2, 2.3%. It's low. a phenomenal rate. Now, even if you're getting into the market right now on a variable rate, 
And the, the spreads, you know, I don't want to go into too, too much detail with, with what's happened with the spreads and that sort of thing. But in a worst case scenario on a variable rate, you're still looking at a rate of 2.7% right now. Right. I was having this conversation with somebody the other day, exactly that. And they were asking me the same thing. And again, I don't, I don't profess to be like, I've done my education with mortgages and certified and all that stuff. But like, I don't, I do not practice. So I don't profess to have the knowledge anywhere close to what you've got in terms of advising people on this. Mm -hmm. But in talking with people and understanding this whole thing, I was saying very much the same variable is, is where to go right now. Now it's not a long-term thing, right? That's maybe a, a, a three-year that you take there and you sort of watch what happens over the next 24 to 36 months. But well, my, my, my thoughts were the variables, the direction to go right now. And the reality is we're going to pay that amount of interest. It's going to get up to 4% in my right. opinion. Okay. It's going to go up to 4%. Do you want to start paying 4% now or do you want that to eventually go up? Right. Right. Cause you're still in a better position with the variable right now. Pardon me. You're still in a better position taking Absolutely. a variable today, right? In, in my opinion, you are. You know, I've so, got clients calling, you know, do I lock into fixed? Do I lock into fixed? I'm working out all the numbers because at the end of the day, it's about dollars and cents. It's about cash flow. Um, Canadian, you know, the dream of, of home ownership mm -hmm. is that it's a dream. People will, will, you know, not go to restaurants. They'll, you know, buy a less expensive car but they will always, always, always make their mortgage payment. That's what Canadians do. So right. at the end of the day, it's figuring out a way to make that mortgage payment. Well, this yeah. is okay. So the cash flow thing, and I want to get into that part of the conversation, but you know, I guess kind of going through a timeline of this, because you say cash flow, when we talk about buying power and we talk about making these mortgage payments or what are we giving up or what are we not doing just on that, on that, just before we take off on the topic of fixed versus variable, if I'm going variable, is there a specific term that's being recommended right now? So I, honestly, if you're going variable, it doesn't matter if it's a three or a five year. Generally, okay. there's only three and five years uh, available. The right. penalty is the penalty to come out of it. So what you're going to look for is, you know, prime minus whatever. You're going to look for that lowest rate that you can get. Right. So whether it's okay. a three year or five year, if you have to come out of it, it's three month interest uh, penalty, which is nothing compared to the fixed rate penalty, there which is, is usually interest rate differential. So, right. you know, potentially a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage might be a six or seven thousand dollar penalty versus twenty or twenty five thousand on a, a a fixed, right? So again, I'm a huge There's proponent yeah, okay. of variable just for the flexibility <clears throat> in in coming out of it. Okay. Now, okay. what yeah. you want to look at, what you want to look at is make sure that that particular fixed rate doesn't, or sorry, that particular variable rate doesn't have a, um, a bona fide sales clause or that particular mortgage doesn't have a bona fide sales clause. Because if it does, the only way to get out of that mortgage is to sell your house okay. or, or whatever it is. So you want to make sure that you have that flexibility. And, and generally the difference in rate is like 0.05%, which is nothing. And I'm going to, I'm going to leave the explanation of all of that to anybody who's actually interested. I say this very seriously. Anybody who's actually interested, this is why you need a professional who understands all of this. And this is why we've got Lucy here today so that anybody can, A, you can tune in, you can understand what's going on, but B, you can, you know, maybe, maybe you've got some questions you want to reach out to her after the fact um, to understand what, what she meant by that. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of leave that hanging as a little carrot for everybody to, you know, say, go and find that one out. Um, reach out to her to figure that one out. But looking at this then and going through a timeline of, again, when we talk about home ownership, right? Before we can even secure a mortgage, mm -hmm. we need to find a property. Yes. But realtors want to know if a buyer has been pre-approved and so that they understand the buyer's buying power. Yet banks and brokers won't give an official pre-approval without an APS, an agreement versus sale. And this is like, 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 which came first, the chicken or the egg, the cart before the horse? Like, you know, we can't commit to an APS because we don't know how much we can afford, but we can't get pre-approved without the APS. How does a, get, a buyer get pre-approved properly so they can so, even take the step to offer on a property? That's, that's an amazing question, David. And anybody that has spoken to me or, you know, any conversation that I've had, it's about understanding who you're working with. 
it, it's gone on in, in all honesty, truthfully gone are the days where you go get a pre-approval or, you know, you, you, as a realtor, you talk to your client and you're like, uh, did you get a pre-approval? Oh yeah, everything's great. Don't worry about it. My bank's got me. Well, nowadays you have to work as a realtor, you have to work with the mortgage broker or, you know, whoever it is you're working with, but you have to have a working relationship with them. You have to talk to them at each and every single property that the client is interested in. There's a, there's some tools that we have through Terranet. Um, you know, CMHC and Sagen are absolutely amazing with taking calls. Whether or not CMHC or Sagen are involved or it's, it's an insured file or it isn't, they are a wealth of knowledge. Um, there are a wealth of information that we can tap into as mortgage brokers to call and, and say, hey, listen, do you guys have a problem with this particular property, with this particular area? Whether or not the client is insured or not, it doesn't matter. They're just giving us an understanding of, of if there's an issue. You, so as any professional, you have we have to do our due diligence like way far beyond what is is normally required okay and i've got anybody that's worked with me in the last little while knows i want to hear about every single property every single property that your client and you are thinking of putting an offer in don't put the offer in before you speak with me well this is, is the idea but right? call me you, you can't give give us a number that says like here's your safe or or Okay, let, let, I make an assumption here. Let me let me go backwards on that and say I, I'm not going to say you can't give us that. The whole process of like that pre-app and that pre-qual and just to sit back and go like, Dave, yes, you can go and offer on that property. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a little bit going on in the background, but it 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 feels in a lot of times that you can't get even to that point for me because I didn't bring you an APS. No, and I keep hearing that from people. They're like that I. Well, I can see that that is perhaps that's the message mm -hmm. that is coming across to you guys. We can, we can okay. look at that. Okay. We can look at it and say, okay, this is based on the information that is provided based on the information that you've given me right now. This is what I have. This is a best case scenario. This is a worst case scenario. At the end of the day, we're going to do everything possible to mitigate risk. But it's important that the realtor that we're working with and the client understand what that risk is because not everybody's in the same circumstance. And we have to remain open-minded about, you know, everybody wants this one and a half percent rate. It's gone. It's mm -hmm. not coming back. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, even this four or four and a half percent, or if we have to take this to an alternative uh, lender to get this done, five percent, it's still worth buying. We need to break that down and we need to say, okay, this is what, this is what we would like to do, but this is what we can do. Right. Are you prepared? Uh, you know, are you prepared to move forward with a worst case scenario? And I can tell you that when it's broken down dollar for dollar and, and having a real conversation about what the risk is with that transaction, people move forward. People absolutely move forward. They, they, they don't stop there. It's, understanding the client it's understanding everything about the deal and it's okay. understanding as much as you can about the the property and that well that's what i was gonna say i guess, I guess even before the property you've got to understand the client so there is a bunch of information you're going to get about the client to Absolutely. understand again cash flow buying power etc and now you can present me a range me let's say being the realtor here's the range or a client here's the range that you can probably be safely knowing you can yep. go and offer on that property Absolutely. With that, and then and then when I got my APS, then I can come back and go. Okay, officially, I need you to go register. Like, see if I can make this work. Not quite. We're not quite at the APS yet. So okay. what's going to happen is my process is this: we start with the client, we do the application. I collect all documents up front. Some mm -hmm. people don't like it. Some people don't understand why. Mm -hmm. But income confirmation down payment confirmation, separation agreement. Those are the three things. If, if somebody is separated, mm -hmm. those are the three things that I collect up front. with those three things. I have an indication of what I can do. Okay. Gotcha. And by that point, I've, I already have an idea of which lender we're sending this to. So then it becomes a communication between myself and the realtor and it's okay. I need to know 
where you guys are looking. I need to understand what, you know, what our client is looking for, what they want. And is that realistic? Is that really realistic for their budget? So again, it's not just the relationship with myself and the client. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship with myself, the client, the realtor. You know, and I've heard that I've heard that so many times from the mortgage side of going like the realtor needs to understand the relationship here, right? It, it's it, and I say the same thing to the mortgage side. You you know you got to build relationships with the realtors, mm -hmm. and I know you do a kick ass job of that. I mean, hence again when we bring up the buzz conference, just being there with people. How much support I see that you get from the real estate community out there. It's building relationships though, and it's it's honestly it's transparency. Mm -hmm. It is absolute transparency. There's you know you got to give it to. You have to give it to the client and the realtor the way it is. It may not be what you want to hear, but this yeah. is what it is. Okay, and, so and here, yeah. Find a way to get it done, but th these are the goods. This is what it is. So let's say this then. Okay, so hold on. On that note, because that was a big thing for me to understand that is to go. So I don't need the APS for you to necessarily provide me with a range of what I could potentially do. A high and a low. Dave, as if you go here, you should be safe. I'm not putting that in writing for you right now, but I'm going to tell you based on all the knowledge I've got and what I understand about the industry and what I understand about you, this is kind of your range. This go is ahead, the range. Go ahead and you can start to do your search. Just keep me posted on what you're searching for. Let me know the areas and I'll continue to kind of advise and guide and go, whoa, 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 stay away or yeah, yeah, go for it. We should yep. be good to go. Yep. Right. Because yep. now I'm at least I got the safety net that says to me, yeah, you can go and offer on that property. Yes. Right. Because those things are happening fast right now. Right. And and again, it's about, OK, it's nine o'clock. We got to up our offer by twenty thousand uh, dollars. We got to call Lucy. OK, you know, so this is my I, next I, one I, then. I, Let's mm -hmm. this is my next one. Whether I get the pre app in writing or and we just sort of said, like, it's not going to necessarily happen in writing at this stage, but it's going to happen verbally and it's going to happen on based on knowledge. OK. Mm -hmm. And and understanding the market out there. I make the offer on the property, the mm -hmm. vendor signs back. I really want the property. So I try to figure out how to get a few extra dollars so that I can pad that offer. Mm -hmm. And just to where you were going there is, and, and, and my, I mean, my question being, how is it that so many people have been able to go back and get more money just like that? You would be very, very surprised what somebody is willing to give up to for that one house that they love. But, but loose. it's like, it's like you, you, from mom and dad, 20,000 from mom and dad. There's ways to borrow very, very few, very few options. I'm not going to say we can just go out and get a line of credit for $25,000, mm -hmm. but that's why it's important for us to work with the realtor and the client at the same time. Right. Let's figure this out. And there are times where I'll just say, guys, we can't do it. We cannot go 20,000 more period. Unless you can do this, we cannot go 20,000 more. And it, it's so hard to make that decision. It's so hard for me to say, because at that time they just want it. Right. And, and at that point it has to be, you know what, we can tweak this and we can tweak this. And if you pay this off, we can do this. Or if you call mom right now and say, mom, I need $15,000 to make this happen. Can you do it? Most of the time, we can get something done. I'm not saying it's possible every time. Okay. But I mean, here we're, we're talking, uh, and I don't want to, you know, downplay 15 or $25,000 yeah. in terms of the value of it, but I'm talking the hundred, the 200, that person who, go, yeah. who thought I'm going to go off on a one five and I'm going to sign back at one eight. Cause I just magically found another $300,000. Like <laughs> I've, I've no, no, but like, seriously, I have asked yeah. like, so many people, this question, I want to know, and I, I, I'm not going to peg you to go, no, you, know, no, no. you know, exactly where it's coming from, but just the conversation of it all, I think it's important is where are people getting the money from? Like, I, I, I don't get it. Bank of mom and dad. Two, three, I'm four hundred thousand yeah. dollars. I have a particular client right now. Love her to pieces. I refinanced her mortgage in December. So she could pull out four hundred thousand dollars to give uh, two hundred thousand to each of her kids. We're, we're actually in the middle of purchases. So right what's now. she doing? She, she makes really good money. She's okay, just, okay. but how many people are like that? That's what I'm trying to yeah. figure out. There are more than we know. 
There are more. Listen, they say the average, uh, if you're renting in Toronto, you need to be making $90,000 a year. That's a lot of money. Like, I mean, just, you know, based on like average income, eh, people are not there. I know there's people making money, but there's also a lot of people that are not right. making that type of money. So you have, you, know, to, you have to have combined income to make that at this point yeah. for the, for the most part, anyways, it's, but, um, so it's bank of mom and dad. That's it's, like, it's bank of mom and dad. A hundred percent. I've been hearing it, a lot it, of that. Yes, gifting. If they if, well, they're gifting part of their inheritance, right? So they're not just gifting. That's part of their inheritance. And, and mom and dad's really, and it, you know, I, I'm going to do the same thing for my kids. When mm -hmm. the time comes, you need a hundred thousand dollars. Now you don't need it when I'm gone. You need it now. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah. what's happening. And, and again, we're looking at cash flow. We're making sure that the parents are okay. Um, but at the end of the day, it, people are, a lot of people are tapping into you know, an early, um, what's it called? Early, an early inheritance. Yeah. Yeah. It's happening a lot. And I'll do the same thing for my son when we have to. My daughter was, in all honesty, lucky enough to get into uh, the market about three years ago. She bought a little condo, actually just sold last night in multiples. It was, uh, what it was insane. It's but not. That's what I'm saying. So how did those people just get more money to go and buy that property? They were told they could buy here. All of a sudden they bought there. It's simply mm -hmm. because like last minute they went, mom, dad, I need some money. Like, you know, please. I don't know how, you know, it, it's bank of mom and dad. It's themselves. But I'm telling you, people are leveraging themselves quite a bit with, with the mortgages. Well, that's the thing they that are. gets me. It's like, you see, to me, I know there was a billboard there. It was like, you know, if you can't, you can't like buy a home or something, like go find rich parents. Like we saw that was, yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah. You didn't see the headlines on that? No, I don't think I yeah, saw yeah. it. That's like that. There's like a billboard up for that right now. And they're, it's actually getting a little bit of slack out there in the media. Um, that is anyhow. really what's happening though, David. It is. That's the thing. Now at, at a time people were claiming that this was, you know, all about immigration. I, I just, I find it hard to believe when we look at what's been going on the past 24 months that like we're being fueled by immigration. So I, I, I agree with that. I think that both factors play a huge part in this. I really do. Like, I want my kids to own a home. I want my kids to have something. It doesn't have to be a palace. It could mm -hmm. be like my daughter's first place was a 500 and I think it was 530, 550 square foot um, condo that she literally said to me, mom, I got to get out of here because I've been in this condo for two years with COVID. Mm -hmm. I got to get out of here. Yeah. So they ended up buying a second, uh, well, not a second. They bought their second home, just sold their condo, but they're, they're up to here in mortgage. I mean, it is what it is. You either do That's that. That's the killer. Yeah. But like, I've got a client of mine and I asked her and I said, you know, she, they go on and off around properties, everything else. And I said, you know, I said, uh, like, how do they just keep doing that? She goes, oh yeah, my clients, no problem. If they got to go up a hundred, they go up on a 200, no problem. 300, no problem. 400, no problem. Foreign buyers. Mm -hmm. Just again, sort of there's some of the fuel as well is that if there's a lot of money coming from overseas and they can just continue to dump it in, well, all of a sudden you get everybody else who's maybe local going, I want to buy, I can't afford to get there anymore. So we're getting this, you know, this driving up of prices again, because these people have just a ton of money to throw down there. And, and I mean, that is definitely pure, purely foreign money when it's getting to that point where yes. like people have that much more money to throw in with no regard. I mean, I, that's, that's obviously one of the factors driving all of this right now. So I've got a couple, I've got a couple of foreign buyers uh, right now, and that's exactly what it is. You right. know what? We don't want to put the, the money, money down, but this is how much I've bought. And wow. they're, they're just, I'll just get more money from back home. I'll just get more money from back home. And I'm like, oh my God, can I, can I get more money from back home too? I don't have a back home, but can I have right. a back home? <laughs> <laughs> right. So here, we just said that the, the, um, average household salary, mm -hmm. you know, you need combined income, but we know that, that like, even what we're looking at right now, it doesn't fit the average household expenditure. No, something about it doesn't fit, you know? So when we look at carrying costs and cash flow, and like we just, we talked about a few minutes ago, we've been sort of talking about here, you know, are, are people taking this into consideration at all? Like, are people actually looking around like, you know, the monthly nut that they're going to be on the hook for once they decide, Hey, so I've, I've already gone and taken a big mortgage, like bigger than I ever thought, probably bigger than my parents ever took. And even when they were getting rates at, at you know, 19 and 20% back then, right? Mm -hmm. But I've taken a bigger mortgage than my parents have ever taken, like 
through the roof, blow my mind. I've gone and padded that maybe by getting a little bit of extra money from mom and dad or somewhere just because I wanted to buy the property and went to multiples. Mm -hmm. Carrying costs. I got to tell you, that's where my biggest concern in this market comes down to, Lucy, is the carrying cost on all of this. How do people afford that? You got to be clearing fifteen, twenty five thousand dollars a month just to pay for some of this stuff. Yeah, you do. You do. And I'll be honest with you. People haven't looked at it before now. They haven't looked at it until we've seen this climbing interest rate environment right now where it's like, OK, you know what? Groceries have never cost me for three people in my household three hundred and fifty dollars a week. Like, come on. Right. With that being said, I don't buy the steaks anymore that I used to because now it's four hundred dollars a month or yeah. sorry, a week. Yeah. Right. You just you have to cut back somewhere. And, you know, as as hard as it is. People will keep their homes. We will adapt to the rate increases. You know what? This this month, you cannot go and buy those shoes. That's just life. We, You know what? You want this new, you know, Billy wants a new bike. Billy, you're going to have to get this bike instead of this bike because it's $100 and mom and dad just can't spend $150 right now. You know, whoever plays hockey and I'm everybody knows I'm a hockey mom. I'm telling you, my kid had $350 sticks. You're not getting $350 sticks now, buddy. Not happening. <laughs> well, look, cost of groceries. Stone, but yeah, but 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 you're bang on. Cost of groceries through the roof. Like it's stupid yeah. for the amount of money we're paying for stuff. You know, yep. you come home from the grocery store and you realize there's certain things that have just literally doubled in price. Like I think Jen mentioned the other day, she bought like a carton of cream, normally $3.99. It was like $8.99 now. It's like same carton. Tomatoes. Right? Um, hey, tomatoes. Okay, nine for a thing of of like grape tomatoes. I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, she told me about that too. I mean, now the scarier part is the fact that you go there, and that's if they have the tomatoes on the shelf anymore. Yep, that's a freaky part, right? Now that's completely separate to our conversation here today. You yeah, know, but yeah. it's, there's there's some crazy. I mean, gas going up. There's a lot of things happening, and I'm with you by going. You may not be able to just you know go and buy that pair of shoes or, or maybe the hockey stick's not going to be the $350 hockey stick. Yeah. You're going back to a wooden hockey stick, buddy. Twenty. But like, is there something to be said that then says like, why do you need to get into this bigger home to take on this crazy mortgage when you could still enjoy life, live in a home that you're in now and, and still be able to do the other fun things? Well, I don't know. I mean, the point to that is, and I, again, I, you know, lived in the big homes and drove the cars and, and went on the vacations and I, I did that and I find myself in, you know, at this stage in my life in a tiny little townhouse owning two homes instead of one. And I just kind of look at this and say, for me, it really is about quality of life. But at the end of the day, that big home that you're investing in, that is forced saving. Now, I'm going to be honest, and anybody that knows me knows I love my handbags. If I want to go and buy, if I have the choice to put $400 into an account to save for my retirement or buy myself a new handbag, I'm buying a handbag. There's no question. <laughs> but, but again, our homes and these larger homes are exactly that. There are savings. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is it is it a good thing to, you know, step up and buy that bigger home? Absolutely. It's whatever... You know, where where do you want your retirement to come from? Mm -hmm. And I'm never going to retire. I know that. I can never be at home twiddling my thumb. I can do it for a month yeah. or two, but that's yeah. it. It's just not the way that I am. But at the end of the day, that larger home or that, that step up from, you know, a 550 square foot condo with a beautiful terrace, by the way, to, you know, a semi-detached on an oversized lot you're talking like double the money. I want to say triple, triple the mortgage, but that's their savings. It's an investment. It's, I think you know, the big home is awesome. Um, I think, I see, I think aspiring to do that. And you, you bring, it's a great point about the savings hundred percent. So look at this then and say, for all the people that over leverage themselves and we look ahead now, 24 and 36 months down mm -hmm. the road, are those people who will over leverage themselves, are they the ones that start to cause maybe a little bit of a ripple effect of like 
things started to get stagnant and, and that transition from the seller's market to the buyer's market and the fact that people cannot necessarily maybe afford to continue making those payments. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Absolutely. Um, in that particular perspective, it's, you know, there's going to, there's going to be shift of assets. There's always a shift of assets when, when things like this happen. So, and I, and I believe that educating and understanding, you know what, forget about what the interest rate is. What is my payment? Can well, I, that's what's getting me everything? loose. That's what it is. Can you afford to pay that? But, but how many of us spend God knows what on coffee? Hello? <laughs> it's coffee it's like are you a starbucks drinker <laughs> yes <laughs> grande venti lattes with no Actually, foam and extra space and sprinkles and you know Since drops of this and sprays of that <laughs> give me a medium you, black coffee thank you very much <laughs> since i got my nespresso no i haven't to be okay. honest with you. nespresso's you know, Nespresso can be more expensive than Starbucks. I don't mess with those right? machines. They don't like me. I press the thing down really? and then it doesn't pour. And it's like, I got to, I, I throw like three pods out before I make a coffee. Talk about expensive. No, uh, that's <laughs> expensive right? but. but here, another scenario then. Okay. So we're talking about, you know, achieving the, the dream of home ownership. We're, we're, we're looking at the scenarios there about getting financing, what kind of financing to be getting, you know, to pay attention to carrying costs, interest rates, what mm -hmm. that's going to do to affect the market in say 24 to 36 months. To me, that's a big deal. I really do believe that all of these people that are like literally way overextending themselves from a mortgage payment, I believe that in 24 to 36 months, as there's renewals coming up, they may realize that they went overboard on what they spent. But I'll it's an assumption. With regards to qualification, the stress test has been here for years. Yeah. This is what the stress test prepared everybody for. Whether... So if, if we've been qualifying at, you know, 4.79, 5.24, we've been qualifying at a much higher rate. Technically, you should be able to afford these payments. If okay, but if I get, if I qualify 1.5 and all of a sudden I yep. go and buy at 1.8 because I got 300 gifted to me. I mean, I guess it's not on my mortgage. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of money. It's a, here, but let's go to another oh, scenario then. Okay. I own my home. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking to make a move, okay? Mm -hmm. Although I, I, I might want to, um, but I'm going to sit tight because of prices mm -hmm. and because I've also built a ton of equity in my home over the past few years. So the question that I've got then would be, how can I take advantage and leverage the equity in my home to invest in another property, potentially an income producing property, or maybe a vacation home? How do I leverage this equity right now to invest and create more wealth for myself and my family without making the move? Through a refinance. We can refinance your home. Now, uh, I now mean, is this the whole thing loaning oh, against equity? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Now, is that just a broker thing or or, or are the... No, it happens at the... It's been happening for years and years and years. See, I've, I've heard from many and I can tell you personally, I've heard from many though, like they won't loan against equity. Like they don't care how much money's in your house right now. Then there's an issue with income there. Interesting. There's there's an issue with income and they can't they can't actually qualify for the additional funds. That's interesting. Okay? But you can definitely refinance. Now, is it the right thing to do right now? If you you know you happen to be in a 2.5% fixed rate where now you got to go into a 4%. Again, we have to talk numbers, dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. You have to have somebody that understands right. those dollars and cents and can say, okay, but let's look at this from a holistic perspective. What are you going to earn? If we, if you're paying an extra one and a half percent on your mortgage right now, how, how does, does it make sense to do that? Does it still make sense to, to, you know, put, put your eggs in two baskets as opposed to just one, right? Honestly, and, and this is, you know, I always, I, I know there are so many qualified people, it's ridiculous, so many qualified bankers, so many qualified mortgage brokers, but if they can't sit down and talk to you about dollars and cents and what this is going to cost you every month, what you're putting out, what you're bringing in, you're not talking to the right person, right? This is not about interest rate. This is about dollars and cents. And I tell people all the time, and I've been telling them, since the rate started, how do you, you know, can you afford 
an extra $500 a month on your mortgage? And they're like, oh, absolutely not. That's my, that's my, but, my big thing. But, but oh, Lucy, you got to come by the cottage. I, um, I just bought a new ski do. What? You just bought a new ski do, but you can't put it on your mortgage. <laughs> you know, I just bought my, oh, Lucy, you know what? I just, I don't know what I bought. I bought a new boat or I bought this new toy and I'm sitting back going, what's what's wrong with this picture listen i'm all about toys i'm all about handbags i'm all about shoes i'm all about enjoy your life as much as you possibly can mm -hmm. but you know what at the end of the day our homes and our real estate that's our savings that that's that's what we have right so it, sometimes we have to give up something for something else and it's okay if you're not willing to give it up, but you can't have the cake and eat it too. Not well, right yeah, now. Cause there's only so much to go around. And I think that that's the thing. And yeah. that's, that's one of the things I'm trying to bring light to here is everybody just being cautious, mm -hmm. you know, because look on the other side of things too, we're, we see people that, you know, agents that don't want to go show a property that's being offered at 2% to the buy side, because to them, they're not making enough money to me. I'm going, but hold on a second. Maybe that's the right property for your client. And so there's a lot of the whole thing, which uh, money makes the world go round. I get it. But I also think that there's something to be said about, you know, this, this duty that we all have to keep people safe, to help mm -hmm. them see what yep, will the future absolutely. somewhat look like for them in terms of, again, cash flow, buying power. What kind of yep. strangling are they going to do to themselves potentially? Or sacrifices might they have to give up hence the handbag and or the jet ski <laughs> or any of the other stuff that's there what may they need to pass up in order to be able to get this and i think that that's something people need to take into consideration because again there's just there's not an endless pit of money just sitting around although it really does seem like it for many people which is like mind-boggling and and we have to get to as professionals mortgage brokers bankers um we have to get to understand the client as a human being, as a person, because just because you can have a mortgage, it doesn't mean you should. I mean, I remember when my kids were younger and my daughter was uh, dancing and my son was playing ho rep hockey and rep baseball. We spent $20,000 a year on hockey, baseball, dance, music. Like you're sitting there going, where does this money come from? If I have a ginormous mortgage, I can't do that. So it's our jobs to make sure that our clients are getting into the right place. And sometimes that does mean that's some, sometimes that means I lose the business. You know yeah, what? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to lose business. I don't want, I don't ever want anybody to say, well, Lucy didn't qualify me for enough, but at the end of the day, just cause you can have it, it doesn't mean you shouldn't. I like that. It, it, there, there is a responsibility that we have on this side of the tracks to be helping the clients out. And I think Absolutely. everybody really needs to take that in consideration. So, you know, overall state of the market right now, um, how long do you think this whole thing, just, just the pace that we're at keeps going? Um, and I'll, I'll just come straight out and ask the question and say, are we in a bubble? I do not believe we're in a bubble okay. and I never did. Um, and the reason I don't believe we're in a bubble is because the definition of a bubble is something is just, you know, blowing up with hot air or cold air or whatever. Um, and there are reasons that our economy looks the way that it does. There are reasons that the real estate market are as high as it is. Um, there are, you know, there's the whole supply demand issue that goes way beyond interest rates and it goes way beyond cash flow. And, you know, we have some serious issues here. And, and I do, I know, you know, we talk about immigration and you say, well, you know, mm -hmm. I just don't see it. Where are we going to put 400,000 people that are coming in this year? Where are they going oh, to we've, live? We've got lots of it. No, we don't have any inventory. That's a great question. Exactly. <laughs> right? I, you know what? I'm with you. It doesn't make any sense. It, it just, you know, we got to, we got to kind of ride this roller coaster and see what happens, but you have to be around professionals that understand dollars and cents. That's just the bottom line. And yes, we all want to get the deal done and I want to do everything I can to close that mortgage and, and, you know, to help my referral partner, my, my realtor referral partner make that sale, but can't. And then there are times where if we push just a little bit harder and we look for one more, you know, tweak a, uh, the deal a little bit more, get another $10,000 or $15,000 from mom and dad, and we make it happen. But we have to be open-minded and we have to 
uh, we have to be open-minded as professionals while doing our due diligence and taking care of our clients, but it's opening up the client's minds as well to saying, okay, there's, there's another alternative. I can't have it this way because I just can't have it this way, but you know what, maybe we can do it this way. Well, I was just going to ask you about that, right? Like what, what happens if, if a realtor is working a deal, um, mm -hmm. the running into the roadblocks when it comes to financing, like, and we've talked about a few of these already, you know, little hacks that you could do, but I'm just wondering what, what little hacks are there there, uh, available to them that, that maybe we could share to help them expedite the process. And I mean, I'll, I'll just sort of kind of go back over, but it was, you know, paying attention to the numbers of, first of all, mm -hmm. seeing if mom and dad have some money, um, speaking to somebody who actually understands somebody like yourself who understands the money and the financing aspect of things. What are the things there? Like we're, we're into the final moments here of working this deal. We've got to get this extra little thing. What kind of things should a realtor need to be paying attention to? I mean, you could say a consumer or a home buyer as well, but specifically the realtor, because, and, and I'm going to go right back to like the top of our conversation right now. Um, when we mentioned about having the right people and the relationships between realtors and mortgage brokers, I've said to the realtors many times, and I'll continue to say this, you know, it's like you're playing a game with marionettes, right? Mm -hmm. And you're pulling strings. You've got to talk to the mortgage broker. You got to talk to the lawyer. You got to talk to the, you know, the home inspector, the, the stager. You got to talk to the clients. That's the role of the realtors, really, to, you know, make all this stuff kind of work in tandem mm -hmm. with each other, right? Because your job is the number, the money job. It's not the home inspection job or the signs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The realtor needs to understand that. But sorry, going back to where I went there, I'm the realtor. I've got the right person, but I'm stuck. What do I do? There's no magic um, potion. There's no, it, it's, honestly, it's have somebody that you can talk to, have the support around you that you need and understand when part of that value is emotional value and part of it is actually quantifiable value in a property. Okay. That's huge right now. Everybody's like, I need this deal. God, I haven't had a deal in the last three months or the last two months. And this is going to get me my vacation in the summer. You have to be able to remove yourself from that. And we all do it. It doesn't matter how much business you do or you don't do. We all need that next deal. But I can guarantee you that if you, if you push into something that is not meant to happen, that is not right, the whole deal is going to fall apart after you did everything. OK, you have to be you have to be realistic about why this should happen. And is it possible? So, you know, is there a hack? No, I wish I could tell you there there is and just do this. But there is that the hack, the best hack is know who you're dealing with and make sure they're accessible for you at 10 o'clock at night or at nine o'clock at night when you need um, when you need to know if you can do that extra 10,000. That's what you need. And please, I implore people, if your broker or your, your um, banker has said, don't go there, I implore you, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> don't go please. there in terms of price point. Yes. Okay. Don't gotcha. go there. Cool. But, like it. But honestly, make sure that, that you have the relationship with your mortgage broker or your banker, and you actually trust that they can do that extra little bit. OK, that's the um, there's there's sort of that that um, there's a fine line with pushing things, you know, a little farther, but don't push them too far. Just make sure you know who you're dealing with. OK, OK. So, that's so, so OK, let's go here then. What about and and I mean, one of my favorite talks when it comes to marketing um, and building the mind share. But what about market? What about messaging? What kind of messaging should we be sharing out there to people? Um, is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? A good time to invest? Would you be telling people that about, you know, the fact that they got a ton of equity and suggesting that they explore how to leverage it? Like, absolutely. What are you saying to people right now to help them think about real estate financing? And what can we almost echo back to anybody else who's leveraging this messaging right now to kind of go back to their people to, yeah, try to pull in deals for themselves as a, a realtor, you know, in, in the business, um, but at the same time, helping their, say, buyers actually finally get into a place or that seller who does want to sell but can't find a place like marketing messaging. What 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 should we be saying out there to people? What do you say? Educate yourself. Talk to the people that will talk to you. Seriously, because I, I had a call this morning from a, a referral partner. He's like, this person was absolutely adamant to talk to their banker. 
their bankers telling them this. And I'm like, it's blowing my mind because, you know, they're, they're just, they're not given the right information. And it's every circumstance is individual. So it's really, really hard to say, you know, how do I know as a realtor, as a professional, how do I know I can trust that person? How do I know that what they're telling me is the truth, right? You, you got to work with them, but you have to, they, there's really something to be said about the, the right marketing message in um, educate yourself. Okay. The reality is it doesn't matter how many videos I would put, and I hate videos, by the way, you know that, but um, it doesn't matter how many videos I put out there. If you're, if sidebar, you're doing great with video today, by the way. Oh, well, thank you very much. But yeah, it's just not my favorite thing to do. I don't mind talking to people. I, mean, it's just, I feel like I'm talking at people oftentimes and I don't, I don't like that. I like, I love a conversation, but yeah. um, so in terms of getting back to your, your mm -hmm. question there with marketing, um, I think it's really important to make yourself look like the expert, but be the expert. You really, my opinion can be very different than somebody else's. And, and my, the style of how I do things is not for everybody. And mm -hmm. that's just what it is. But when it comes to marketing, how, what do you want people to see you like? What I want people to see me like is I know a little bit because I think I know a little bit, but I want to be approachable. I want somebody to be able to come to me and say, call me. The market that we have right now is not just about a post. You're not going to get what you need from a post. You're going to get what you need from talking to somebody. So I always, you know, I try for my marketing to be educational, but inviting, right? So I, I think that we're all good with words. We all, we're all in this for the most part for the right reasons, because we want to help people. Um, let's, let's introduce that online, but find a way to get it offline where it, it's where you're actually having a conversation. That's to me, the best marketing you can get. You, you can are talking my language, um, online to offline. I, uh, we talk about that a lot. I actually talked about that at the buzz conference as part of the whole idea, but that, that that's really what it is, right? We're going online to try to, you know, build mind share, connect with people. Um, from there though, really get the conversation offline and start to build a relationship. Yep. Right. This is, this is the biggest asset of somebody's entire life. They're not just going to deal with anybody because you put up a post as you just said. Exactly. Um, now Lucy, you've been in the business for like 20 years from what I read of the bio, yep. right? Banking, um, banking and brokering for, for 20 years. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, can I ask which company you're with now and what can you share with people about, you know, you, your business specifically, like, I, I just want people to understand why outside of like the past or almost 53 minutes of, of you sharing all these insights. And I might just say to everybody, that's why, like <laughs> you can see, she knows what she's up to, but, uh, how can we encourage people like, you know, why Lucy? So I'm with uh, currently with Dominion Lending Center's Valco Financial. And truthfully, through COVID and before COVID, it was like, you know, I'm trying to be everywhere, trying to be everything to everybody. But one of the things that COVID has really done for me in my business is it's helped me put the right infrastructure in place and the right support system in place for me to support all of my referral pro uh, partners properly and my clients properly. But me, because... Honestly, at the end of the day, there's a human being on the end of every single transaction. There is a reason for every single transaction. And I'll be honest with you, we are all in this to make a good living for ourselves. And I'm, you know, I do that. I'm, I'm in it for, that's one of the reasons as well. But at the end of the day, it can never be because of that. Mm -hmm. It has to be the people you're working with. It has to be the referral partners. And you know what? I know that they need this. So how can I contribute closing this, you know, with them and for them and for the client, you know, how do I make this happen? Because, you know, they've got two kids over there that are currently sharing their own, their bedroom and they're climbing on top of one another to go to sleep. And what they really need is they need a three bedroom. How can I help that family get that three bedroom? And oh, again, 
you know, just because you can have it doesn't mean you should. So there's that balance of both of those. So the why, um, and for everybody tuned in, I'd say a lot of the knowledge that you bring to the table, uh, but there's, there's, there's obviously a deep passion in helping other people. Absolutely. And when that's the root of it all, you know, good things are going to come out for everybody involved. So I, I think that's absolutely powerful. So um, what are you doing on a daily basis? And, and, and I, I do this in like a short form because I could have a whole episode with you on this stuff. But what are you doing to build Mindshare for yourself? I mean, you just mentioned like not loving the idea of video. Um, I know you do participate in social media. You're obviously at the conference the other day, so you're doing the in-person yeah. stuff. You just yeah. talked about how important it is to build re relationships with others. Are you on the phone a lot with people? Are you networking with a lot of people? Like, what's sort of that just mo on a daily basis? So yes, I it, it's I just have this um, I have this belief that when you do things for the right reason, the right people come to you and you go to the right people. And if if you're doing things for the right reasons, it's just a recipe for success. And it's it's being available as well. I, I You need to be present. How many times does somebody say, well, my mortgage broker can get a deal done, but they're not present. You know, just before COVID, that was the main thing that I realized I wasn't enough of. Mm -hmm. And we all look at our business and it's like, we're, we're all in the thick of it and we don't think about what am I not doing? And while I was, you know, you would, and I, you know, you attempt to be everything for everybody. And at a certain point, you kind of have to be everything to everybody, but at the same time, you're not present. So it's about putting the right things in place to make yourself present. What do you have to do to be there? You know, I had people working in the background and doing what I needed to do at the buzz conference so I could be present for you know, and, and that's, I just do my very best to be present. You know, does it take two hours to return a call sometimes? Absolutely. That's life. <laughs> right. But does it take a week to get back to a client? No, no way. Cannot, cannot. No way. Can't happen. So. How do you know it's been a successful day for you? <sighs> two things. Did I put a, and I ask myself this every night, did I put a smile on somebody's face? Because that's important to me. And what did I do to grow my business? Did I make one phone call? If I made one phone call to somebody I wouldn't normally have called, that that's a win for me. Okay. We all, like I said, I like we it. all get busy. Um, but what did I do today to build my business? And sometimes it's, I think to myself, I didn't do enough. Get your notebook out, write down what you didn't do today and what you're going to do tomorrow and do it. That's just, that's my notebook is my best friend. I have them all over the place. Pen, one of the most powerful things we have right there, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So uh, Lucy, give me some final words, maybe some tips, something that anybody tuned in, that everybody tuned in can go out there, help themselves. I mean, one, we've talked about achieving the dream of home, home ownership, and we've gone through some amazing steps today, and, and you've shared some very valuable insight. Um, we've also talked just tip of the iceberg on marketing and messaging. Again, our audience, obviously, very much within the real estate industry. So we've got a lot of realtors listening to the program right now. You know, what can everybody do to just get out there and help themselves build a lot more mind shares so they can get more market share? Um, honestly, be yourself, go out there, um, do, do what you enjoy doing. We talk about marketing. We talk about, uh, networking. We talk about door knocking and I know people hate that, but believe it or not, it worked for me when I started a mortgage. It, kicks door ass. it does. It, kicks. it does. Yeah. And, um, but the best advice that I can give is figure out what you like to do and do as much of it as you can. Okay. But push your, push the envelope a little bit with something you're not comfortable with. Okay. Because that one thing that you're not comfortable with that you're terrified to do, maybe that one thing that sets you apart from the next person. Right. So like whatever that. it is, it it's, could be anything. Where can people find you? Everywhere. 
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there you go. My, uh, you can email me, uh, text me 647-888-1210. My email is lucy at lucynosemortgages.com. My website is lucynosemortgages.com. It's uh, some pretty amazing branding that one of my clients came up with. So it's not even like my own thing, but it was, you know, that's a whole other story we'll have to get into one day. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Very cool. Well, I encourage everybody to uh, to connect with Lucy, as you could see today, spending uh, some time with us here on the Mindshare Podcast. She definitely knows what's up when it comes to money, financing, real estate, um, and helping uh, people, well, just achieve their dream of home ownership. So, uh, Lucy, thank you. It was uh, very insightful. Um, knowledgeable. You're obviously a professional. We've known each other a number of years. And I uh, I thank you sincerely for making the time to join us today on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And I'm really so glad we got to catch up a little bit. It was great. Likewise. <laughs> thank you. You are either watching us live, you are watching this recording, you are listening to this on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, maybe you went to my website, mindshare101.com, and while you are on my site, make sure that you download your free copy of the Ultimate Marketing Bundle for Realtors. This is a 31-page ebook packed with a ton of tips and tricks for you, um, all related to marketing and sales, plus there's a 90-day social media content calendar in there, all of it in place to help you build more mind shares so that you can get more market share. Um, and of course, if you want to talk about uh, personalized one-to-one -one coaching to help you get to your next level, uh, just get in touch with me, get in touch with me, get in touch with my team, DM us, uh, email us, um, info at mindshare101.com. If you want to set up a strategy call, we will connect on that call. We will learn more uh, from each other and uh, understand what you're looking to achieve and how we are going to help you do just that. Also, do not forget that our push to 100 is on. And so I want to ask everybody, please, when you get a moment, go over to, uh, and you can do this like now if you want to, um, please go to uh, www.ratethispodcast.com forward slash Mindshare 101. It's really, really easy. It'll take you like one minute to do it. Um, but again, www.ratethispodcast.com dot com forward slash mindshare 101 uh and uh please by all means leave a review on the show we would be uh, super 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 grateful of that uh of course uh if, if we haven't connected yet on facebook make sure you uh check me out mindshare 101 and of course on instagram at david greenspan 101 i want to uh once again thank virginia munden and the buzz conference for sponsoring today's episode uh be sure to visit their website www.thebuzzconference.com follow them on instagram at the buzz conference check out the queen b event that's coming up next week uh if you don't make that one there's another one coming up shortly again so uh be sure to tune in stay tuned into everything the buzz conference is up to and of course i also want to thank kids keep in touch systems for sponsoring today's episode if you haven't checked us out yet just go to my site mindshare101.com and click on marketing this has been another episode of the mindshare podcast thank you for tuning in